Painting a watercolor duck is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So here we're going to start by just quickly setting up our file, mostly making sure we have some sort of a paper texture. Now here to do that, you have a bunch of different options. I know that for example, a lot of Procreate content creators like brush creators and video creators have pre-textured files. So if you have a pre-textured file, whether it's mine or someone else's, you can totally skip to the next chapter in the video where we start sketching. Otherwise, you can check the video description below because I included a free sample paper texture. It is not the highest resolution, but it's definitely a great way of getting some texture in your file. And once you have it downloaded on your iPad, you can just open up any Procreate canvas of your choice, then going in the wrench icon menu here, in the add sub menu, you're going to select insert a file, and then you're going to just locate the paper texture in your iPad's file. It's probably going to be if you go in the browse option here in your downloads. In my case, I can see it already, it's right here, but you might have to scroll a little bit and just tapping on it and it's going to import it in your file. From there, you can either resize it using the blue handles or you can tap fit canvas. And one thing that is very important, if you don't want this texture to just be a white rectangle, if you actually want it to be textured and if you want it to be able to draw below it, is to change the blending mode, so just tapping on the little end here, to either linear burn or multiply. You can experiment with both, both can work really well, it just depends on your personal preference. And I also encourage you to rename this layer to texture just so you know what you're working with. And in my case, since I'm working in a pre-textured file, I already have the texture layers that come with that file. So I'm going to delete the one that I just imported, but otherwise just keep that layer at the top of your layer list and you're good to go. Great. So once you have your paper texture in your file, if you want to also have my illustration as a reference, the way to do that is to go in the wrench icon menu. And then in the canvas submenu, selecting reference here, activating that toggle, and that's going to let you import an image. So if you want to download my illustration along with the color palette I will be using in this video, it's quite simple as you can see, they will both be linked in the description below and they're totally free, but they're totally optional. Of course, you could just use the video as a reference and pick your own colors. So here we're going to start with just a very rough sketch to map out the general basic shapes of a duck. So go ahead and create a new layer and make sure that it's below any texture that you might have. And rename this new layer to sketch. Now for the sketch, you can use any color of your choice because we're not gonna see this in the final result. I like to sketch with just a neutral gray. And in this video, I'm always going to suggest a few different brushes. Some brushes are going to be free brushes that come with Procreate and you can totally follow along with those. And other brushes are going to be brushes from my big brush bundle. Now these brushes are absolutely not essential, but if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below and they can help you save time and get more professional results overall because they have a lot of texture and randomness within them, which means you don't have to manually go back to add that texture and randomness down the road. Again, since we're not going to see the sketch in the final result, the brush you use don't matter much. So just pick something you know you're comfortable with. That could be, for example, in terms of free brushes in the sketching pack that comes with Procreate the HB pencil. Otherwise, if you have my big brush bundle, you could pick in the watercolor pack the coloring pencil. We're going to start with a loose oval for the body. And then you're going to use the length of the body to draw an oval for the neck. From there, you can draw a circle for the head and then zooming in onto that circle to map out what I call the plus sign. So just a slightly curved vertical line and a slightly curved horizontal line to help you see the direction of the head. From there, you can map out the beak. I like to start with just placing the V shape that is kind of at the top here, figuring out where I want that to be and then just extending the shape outwards to start building the actual beak. And at this stage, don't worry about making your sketch look good. Just draw a bunch of lines, experiment with different proportions, different positioning. It's okay if it looks messy. Honestly, the messier, the better for now. You can also map up the eye, making it as big or as small as you want, depending on how cute you want your duck to be. And then you can zoom out to reassess the situation. 
And at this stage, it's probably going to look absolutely crazy, insane, and scary. That's okay for now. We're just going to finish mapping out the basic shapes, and then I'm going to show you how to refine it and make it look way less crazy. So roughly towards the middle of the body, you can add two slightly angled legs. And then you can use two triangles to map out each foot. Then last but not least, we're just going to add a bit of a tail poking out as well as a wing, just like that. If you're feeling adventurous, you could totally go straight from this crazy looking sketch onto the color, otherwise we're going to just clean it up a little bit so we have a better idea of what we're doing. And you have two different ways of doing that. You could go back in with your eraser and start kind of cleaning up your lines. I personally like to just create a new layer above my sketch layer, rename this new layer to clean sketch and then lower the opacity of my base sketch until I can just barely see it and start fresh with new lines. And depending on the vibe you want in your final piece, you could even use this clean sketch layer and bring that back later in your final illustration, kind of like I did. I'm gonna zoom in to show you. Just to reinforce the edges of some areas because we're drawing a white dock on a white background. So for example, the top of the back is going to be white on white. So keep in mind that this clean sketch is something that you could totally use later if you want. And in that case, I recommend you either go with a neutral gray or a gray that has a bit of brown or orange in it. If you're using the color palette, this is the color I personally recommend. And this is going to blend really well with the rest of the dock. And here it's pretty simple. You just have to go over and trace which lines you actually want to use from your rough sketch into the final piece. And these lines don't necessarily have to be super straight and clean either. To kind of show this idea of feathers, I have my lines being a bit crooked and a bit more sketch-like, so you could totally do that as well. So I'm gonna stop talking here to let you focus on drawing your clean sketch, take all the time you need, I'm going to keep my video going in the background, and once we're done, we're going to meet up for the next step in which we start adding the colors. Great, so once you have your clean sketch, you can go ahead and hide the rough sketch and create a new layer below the clean sketch and rename this layer to colors. And no matter if you want or not your clean sketch to be in the final result, for now we're going to set it to the blending mode multiply so that we can see it really well no matter the colors we paint underneath. And we're also going to lower the opacity of that clean sketch layer so that we can still see it but so that we can mostly focus on the colors. And on this color layer, we're going to start with all the body of the duck. So what would be the feathers? And for that, we're going to use a few different colors, mostly blues and purple. And here, honestly, the exact blue and purple don't matter that much. I personally just created a rough selection of a few that seem to work pretty well. And the first one we're going to use is a slightly desaturated, pretty light bluish purple, like a blurple type of color. Never said that word out loud. I don't think I'll ever say it again. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> And in terms of brushes here, you have a few different options. If you're working with free brushes, you could go ahead and select from the airbrushing pack, so pack that comes with Procreate, the hard brush, and then lower the brush opacity probably between 30 and 40%. It's going to depend. You might have to test a few things. But essentially what we want here is to have this overlapping effect between different strokes. If you have the watercolor brushes from my big brush bundle though, go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor. 
And here we're going to paint pretty much the entire duck except for the wings and the top of the head. And since we're using brushes that have transparency to them, try to draw the entire shape without lifting your pencil so you don't create any unintentional overlap. If you do lift your pencil and create an overlap, it's really not the end of the world. We're going to blend everything in the next step anyway. But if you're able to, don't lift your pencil. So once you have your shape color then, we're going to pick a slightly different blue. Again, the exact blue doesn't matter, we just want to have a bit of color variation. So in the color palette, I'm going to pick this one right here. You can see it's quite bright and it's a bit more on the green side, like the teal side, than the purple that we had before. And with this blue in the same brush, you're going to brush towards the top of the shape that you just colored in. Now, I know this looks crazy, again, we're going to blend everything in the next step, but for now, while we have either the hard brush or the dark edges watercolor selected, we're also going to draw the beak and the legs, and we're going to do that on a separate layer, so just go ahead, create a new layer, and rename it to orange. And here we're going to start with a super light, really saturated orange color. Then it's very simple, you just go over and color your beak and your legs with that one color. And again, if it's possible, try not to lift a pencil within one shape, but if you do and you create an overlap, that's totally okay, don't worry about it. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this part in the video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the word spring. If you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused with what is the secret password thing. It's a game that we play here in all of the illustration videos that I post. I had a secret password for you guys to find. And it's kind of fun, people seem to like it. But the main thing about it is that it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys, which is super, super, super important. So just go ahead and leave a comment with the word spring and then we're going to keep going. Once you have your basic beak and feet, go ahead and pick a darker version of your orange that is also a little bit more red. Once more, the exact color doesn't matter much, but you can see it's just quite saturated still, but a little bit darker. And this time we're going to go in the part of the beak that is open as well as the nostril. And here you can overlap your strokes if you want darker sections in the beak. We're also going to use this dark color in the part where the legs connect with the body to add a bit of a shadow. And we're going to use it to paint the webbed part of the feet between the toes. And one last thing before we blend, if you want, you can add a shadow below your duck. So just creating a new layer, putting that layer below everything, renaming it to shadow. And picking some sort of a grayish blue, again, the exact color doesn't matter that much. Then you can just quickly map out a shadow under your duck. Great, so at this stage we have all the colors mapped out, but it looks absolutely crazy. So we're going to start blending everything in to create a watercolor effect. And for that, you have a few different options you can use. If you're working with free brushes, you could use what is called the smudge tool here at the top. And you can set that smudge tool to, from the airbrushing panel, either the medium or the soft brush. Both work totally well. Again, it's a question of personal preference. If you do have the watercolor brushes though, you can set your paintbrush, so another smudge tool, the paintbrush, to the water blender. And using these tools, going back on your color layer, you'll be able to start smudging all the weird looking blobs that we have and start turning them into what would resemble a bit more watercolor pigments flowing on paper. If you're using the water blender, there is a lot of randomness within the brush. So you can just kind of go over very quickly and you're going to see that your color starts kind of going everywhere, which is why we want. But if you are using the smudge tool, I'll give you an example, you're going to have to create that randomness manually. So instead of going in really smoothly following the lines, you're just going to have to intentionally draw a bunch of squiggles everywhere. So here, just take a few seconds to blend your blue and your purple together. And 
And then we're all going to select our eraser tool and we're all going to set it to the soft brush from the airbrushing panel, so free brush that comes with Procreate. And we're going to use this eraser to erase parts of the color to bring back some light because right now it's quite dark and quite flat. So we're going to add some light on the top of the head here, just loosely erasing. Maybe on the back of the head as well, just to help it kind of pop a bit more. You can also add some on the neck. Maybe a little bit on the belly. Honestly, there is no right or wrong way to do this here. It's all about adding a bit of white to break up the otherwise super solid shape that we had. We can also go back to the orange layer to add some light on the beak. So erasing on one side. And maybe also adding a bit of a highlight on the nostril. Same thing for the feet. If you want to add any highlight, you can do that at this stage. And speaking of the feet, for now, don't worry about the fact they're overlapping with the shadows. We're going to fix that in the next step. And at this stage, feel free to do some sort of a back and forth. So erasing some parts of the color and then going back with either the water blender or the smudge tool to blend in these erased parts, erasing some more if you want. So feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to experiment with this back and forth between the eraser and the blending tool. And once we're done with that, I'm going to show you how to add even more color variation as well as how to blend this ground shadow that we have going on. Great, so that's a pretty good start, but there are a few different hacks that you could use to really amp up your watercolor texture, one of them being to add some sort of a gradient within your shape. So making sure your color layer is selected, you can go and use the selection tool, setting it to freehand and making sure the color fill option is deactivated, that's super important. You can draw a selection towards the bottom part of your duck. Then selecting the feather option, you're going to feather somewhere between 20, 30, and 40%. The exact number is going to depend on the size of your canvas, so you can kind of experiment, but it's probably going to be around 30%. And then with that selection, with the feather, you're going to open up the adjustment panel, select hue, saturation, and brightness. And then if you play with the sliders at the bottom, you're going to be able to just tweak your color and create a gradient. In my example, I had some sort of an orange belly, so I'm going to do that again, which means putting the hue towards the right, increasing the saturation and the brightness as well, but you could totally experiment and create any color variation of your choice. You can also use hue, saturation and brightness without a selection just to tweak your entire color selection. In my case, I feel like my duck is a little bit too colorful, so I can just go back and, for example, lower the saturation, maybe bring up the brightness a bit, but essentially just tweaking the whole piece using that tool as well. So take all the time you need here to add as much color variation as you want, especially if you're working with the free brushes that come with Procreate, probably going to want to use the selection tool technique a few times to create some color variation and some randomness within your piece. And once you're done with that, we're going to jump straight to the next step in which we're going to fix the shadow, start playing with the outlines, and maybe add some splatters. So essentially just making this piece look good. Great, so once you're happy with your base colors, we're going to go back and fix the shadow, so go ahead and select your shadow layer. And still with either the smudge tool or the watercolor blender, we're going to blend it in a little bit. Once you have it blended, feel free to use the eraser to erase any overlap that you might have between that shadow and your feet so that the feet remain a nice vibrant orange instead of a muddy brown. Now, very important, we're also going to add an eye to our duck. So just creating a new layer above the sketch and renaming it to eye. And here you're just going to pick a dark charcoal and the color palette is going to be this one right here. And here, if you're working with free brushes, you're going to stick with the hard brush. Otherwise, if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and pick the thin, intense watercolor. And very simple, you're just going to fill in the eye.
And now that we have the eye, honestly, if you want, you could go ahead and hide your clean sketch if you don't want any outlines. I personally feel like this is a little bit too open. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my sketch. Um, I might actually lift up the opacity to see it even more. But I'm going to go back in and erase some parts so it's not quite as closed lines. Now if you want, you could totally go in and erase straight onto that layer. I personally like to create a mask, so just tapping on a layer, selecting mask, and then erasing on that mask. Let's say I want to open up this line here. I can just erase. And it looks like the line is gone, but if I was to hide the mask, the line is still there. So without going into all the details about layer mask, I have a full video about those. If you want to check it out, I will link in the description below. But for now, just think of mask as something that allows you to erase parts of your shape without actually losing the shapes, which means if you change your mind later, you can just either hide your mask or delete your mask and your clean sketch is still going to be there. So you wouldn't have to redraw it again. And here again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You could keep all of your sketch lines if you want, or you can go back in and erase a few of them just to make it look a little bit more fluid and organic. And last but not least, if you do have my watercolor brushes, you could go ahead and add some splatters. So for that, you might want to create a new layer above everything. Rename this layer to splatters and set the blending mode of this layer to linear burn so that your splatters blend well with the colors below them. And you can really go back to any color you use. I'm going to go back to one of my blues, the purple one. And then with the splatters brush, you can just sprinkle a few splatters here and there, which should really help bring your piece together. If you enjoyed this video and want more watercolor tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. And then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.